Hi everybody, hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, remember when I said that it was nice to see some reporting that was fair and asking tough questions and stuff like that? And I mentioned the CBC and how the CBC is basically financed by the liberal government here in Canada, the, the sitting government. What do you say? Don't even have to say liberal. The sitting government. Um, well, the provincial leader here in Ontario is not the same party. So, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a progressive conservative compared to the liberals. And the liberals are in charge of the country right now, including the funding for the CBC. Well, you should have heard this reporting. It could not have been more biased. So by now, I'm sure all of you know about the variant in India. They're calling the Indian variant now. And how many cases? They almost hit 400,000 cases in India. They have people on the street setting fires and bonfires in the street so they can bury their dead with a ritual. Bodies sitting out in the street. It, it's, it's a horrendous, horrendous situation right there horrendous and it hasn't even gone out to the countryside yet and they're terrified that this variant is going to get out to the countryside. So one of the big things that a lot of people have been saying that our, our government here in Canada was too late doing is locking down our borders. Now we locked down the driving back and forth and you know we call it you know you're not supposed to go for unnecessary travel but necessary travel can be anything from a funeral to visiting a sick relative and stuff like that so there's a lot going on that you can bypass things which is the reason we ended up getting the uk variant here in canada we didn't shut down the airlines we got the brazilian variant didn't shut down the airlines. The African variant never shut down the, the airlines. And now there was finally pressure enough on the Canadian government that they said, you know what? We better suspend the, the direct flights from India for 30 days, which they finally did after everyone saying, why haven't you done this now? That variant in India is showing like it's way more deadly, way more, you know, infectious, you can catch it easier, it overrides the other variants that are out there. Just don't let it in the country. Of course, it's already here. We acted too slow here in Canada. We already have cases of this variant here in Canada. And now people are saying, well, wait a minute, people are bypassing that, you know, we, we say we have the strictest, um, airport security as far as bringing people into the country. Some of the biggest travel restrictions out there, and by that we mean you have to have a test before you get on your flight. When you land, you get another flight, and you have to quarantine yourself for three days in a hotel and you until your test clears. If your test clears earlier than that, you can then finish your quarantine in your own home. Now, people are getting around that by just flying to a border town here in Canada and walking across the bridge or having a you know a taxi drive you to the boat to the security and you jump out and they're walking in they have people meet them there and pick them up now they don't have to spend two thousand dollars per person on that hotel and they just can go home and quarantine themselves and you know we we're having fifty thousand passengers arrive in a week some weeks here in Canada. Now that's not normal travel, but try and keep tra tabs of 50,000 people coming across the border and whether or not they're quarantined when they get here, whether or not they're quarantined alone, or are they quarantining with seven or eight people living in those families, you know, and they're still going out to work. So if the family member catches it and brings it into the work, and this is how variants can get in. This is how the Indian variant has gotten here by flights and things like that. So the Ontario government went and asked, uh, along with many other provincial government leaders, although Ontario has been asking for it for a week now, and the rest have all chimed in in a call this, this week, saying we need 
we need tighter restrictions on the border from the United States, not, not, not for Americans and that, our own people coming across the border to get away from that quarantine hotel. We need something. We need stricter guidelines stopping people from coming in. Um, and so this reporter that I'm watching this report come in kept on saying, well, you know, this is the third time this week that the Ontario government has asked the Liberal Party of Canada Prime Minister for help. Uh, to help stop the spread of the virus. Now, most of you don't, may not know that travel accounts for less than one quarter of 1% of the variants we're catching coming in, as opposed to 2% in the airlines. So it's a very small number. Um, we're not talking about stopping the spread of the virus by restricting people and quarantine people when they get here. I'm not necessarily in favor of that quarantine hotel and stuff like that. I'm more in favor of just shutting down the airlines and shutting down the border completely if you want to stop that variant from getting in here since we are so far behind in vaccinating our country. But they made it sound like Ontario's asking for help to solve the COVID spread in Ontario, even though it's a very minimal amount for that the federal government can do, and it really isn't the cause of the spread, everybody. He's not talking about the spread. The other provincial leaders were not talking about the spread of the virus. They're talking about the variants. Stopping variants from taking hold in our country, like the UK variant did. The only reason we're in a th third wave right now is because we left our borders open and we got the UK and Brazilian variant. That's the only reason. We would not have been skyrocketed had that variant not been here. But of course, they had to spin it like the, you know, the Progressive Conservative Party can't handle it and are looking at little things that really don't make a difference. And they're asking the federal government that's doing such a great job because, you know, um, they've allowed every variant into the country so far. And, uh, oh yeah, we're still in lockdown. And, uh, oh yeah, we're ranked 62 in vaccine rollout in the country. Um, Oh, yeah, and uh, their vaccines were delayed again this week. Uh, you know, but, but they're doing such a good job. See, this is the CBC's reporting. And in case you didn't know, if you didn't hear it, the CBC's budget of over $1 billion a year is completely funded by the government. So if you're wondering why they really favor, and it really doesn't matter that it's a liberal government, if the progressive conservative government was in there, they'd be doing the same thing. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying is they really kiss butt. They really do kiss butt of the, <laughs> of the whoever's in power at the time. You can do no wrong. You can do no wrong. And it's a shame because I used to work for this company. I used to be a contractor there with CBC. And I know some great great reporters and anchor people from there. Peter Mansbridge, um, for one, from the National in CBC News, and Peter Van Dusen and his brother Mark Van Dusen here in Ottawa, local news broadcaster, and Peter was has moved on to bigger things as well with CPAC. Like, these guys had integrity, these guys were really good, and they would report. And it seems like the last 15 years or so, it's all about we can't get our budget cut anymore and do not say anything wrong about the government. And you know what? If you're a news organization, um, you lost all credibility if you can't report honestly and you can't report non-biasly. And then that goes for United States as well. That goes for Canada as well. And that's the big problem with the news medias out there right now. Because in all honesty, if you look at any station, Fox News, CNN, NBC, CBC, 
and you look at those, do you honestly say to yourself, I completely trust everything they say? Because if you do, <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. Can you honestly think they're always, always telling you the exact honest truth about everything? Because I don't. 